everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode. My name is Nick. I'm an account executive here at Sona. And today we're going to be going through the Move Indes 5000 and how to set one up. Now, the Move Indes 5000s are great machines if you're a customer that just needs a simple payment terminal to do just that, accept payment. So let's take a look at that right now. So this is how the Move 5000 looks. So first off, we're going to run through a sale and a return and how that will look. Sales quite simple. You select the sale app, you punch in the number that you wish to charge your customer, you hit OK, you select yes, and we have tipping on. So if you want to leave a tip, you can press one and we'll prompt you with these percentages. And this is where you'd pay. Fairly simple. Now to get back, we cancel it, we just hit the X. And to do a return, we do the same thing. We click it. Now, this is important. Only people with supervisor ID or a manager password can do returns. Next, we're gonna look at the setup menu. And this is where a lot of the questions come from. So if we select it, the first we're gonna look at is communications. And all we wanna do in communications is make sure the Wi-Fi is on if you're using Wi-Fi, and the mobile data is off. The reason being, if you try to keep it on and use Wi-Fi, sometimes it'll disconnect and try to use one or the other, enabling you to not take payment at all. So next, now that we went through the sale and return, I'm gonna take you through the admin option here on the bottom left of the screen, and just go through the kind of basic questions we typically get when setting up or training new customers on this device and the Desk 5000. So if we select it, we typically get questioned about, can you add a clerk ID? And the answer is yes. Under clerk menu, you select it, and it says add ID. So ID, I'm gonna select one, clerk name is me, which is Nick, enter. So now all that does is when we go back to the sale app, it'll prompt me for the ID, which this associates the clerk that's running the sale. Next, we're just gonna look at receipts. And this is kind of a niche one, but kind of cool. If you click it, you can see something called footers. And this is where you can kind of customize the footer note on the receipt. So if you want to be something cool or funny or quirky that you want to leave on your customer's receipt, this is where you'd put it. Next, we're going to look at trans options. And there's a lot of different things in this one. So the first thing we're going to look at is prompts. Now, if you're a business that uses invoicing and you want to put your payments to the invoice, you would select invoice here and have this on. So now, if we go back to a sale, not only do I have to enter my ID, but now it prompts me for the invoice number, which I can match to the invoice provided to your customer. Next, we're gonna go into settlement. There's a few things on here. If you want to receive your settlement report daily, you're gonna to wanna to click number one here and put it on summary. And all this does is ensures that every day after the device batches, you're gonna get a full slip of the settlement and the batch history from that day. If you don't, simply leave it off. Another big thing on settlement is if you wanted to auto settle, meaning that you don't have to remember to batch out the device. Right now for us, as you can see, it's at 2300, which is 11 o'clock. If you wish to do it any later or earlier, this is where you would do it. Another big question about these devices is how to set up the tipping options. So right now you see the tip options at number five. So if we select that, you're gonna be prompted with all these different options. So the first thing you probably wanna set up is the tip guide and your tip guide values. So right now we have it at 15, 18, and 20. So depending on you, what you, the business wanna do, this is where you would enter it in. Another big thing is if you wanna have the tip mode at an amount or a percentage or both. 
Right now we have it at both. I would suggest you do that as well. Lastly, if we go to number one, standard tip only, that's what it's selected on. We can have these options of four and you, the business, can choose which one suits you better. And finally, one of the last things we get is how to make sure that the machine doesn't time out before the payment is accepted. So under number six at term settings, we select that, you're gonna see right here, idle timer. So depending on how fast or how slow you want your machine to either time out or not time out before payment is accepted, this is where you would put the number. Right now, ours is selected at 90 seconds. You can do 60 seconds, 30 seconds, 15 seconds, 120 seconds, whatever you think is necessary for your customers to be able to pay. Well, that's it for today. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you have any questions, please reach out to info at sonapay.ca. We'll see you next time.